like to introduce my next project, and that's this uh, replica of a 1952-53 MGTD uh, built on a 1973 Volkswagen Beetle chassis. So all of the bits and pieces that are associated with the mechanical parts are readily available. Uh, and surprisingly, the fiberglass and a lot of the trim parts are also through several web suppliers. So I was kind of pleased to see that. Uh, this car kind of followed me home last night. It was uh, parked alongside a street in my neighborhood, and I stopped and uh, knocked on the door and asked if they were uh, selling that car. And the lady who answered the door said, yes, we are, and the man's coming to pick it up tomorrow. Sorry. So I went about my business, and uh, two weeks later, I noticed it was still parked out in front of their house, and I knocked on the door, and the same lady answered, and she said, oh, I'm so glad you came back. My husband has not forgiven me, since I didn't get your name and number. Well, we had a chat and agreed, agreed on a price, and I towed it home last night. And I'm really quite pleased with the purchase, and I'd like to kind of give you a sense of the before, and then uh, some of the project plan to put this on the road in time for EVCCon in September. Uh, as, a, uh, as an electric vehicle. As I mentioned, this is a replica of, a, of an early 50s MGTD. And of course, that's based on a whole history of earlier models dating back into the 1930s. Uh, it represents kind of the last of the square rigger British sports cars. Uh, there was an interim model after this called the TF. And then shortly after that, the MGA, which introduced a uh, more streamlined style. But this is kind of straight up and down and rather interesting. It has suicide doors, which means that they open from the front. And I was quite pleased to find that the interior is actually in pretty decent condition here. The veneer on the dash is gone, and I'm not real pleased with the instruments. I suspect that a fresh set of Speed Hut gauges would really look nice here, and I think I'll cover that uh, that dash in vinyl rather than wood, although I might, might reconsider on that. Uh, of some interest is behind the seats here is a very large area that will certainly accommodate six of my uh, GBS 100 amp hour cells and uh, all standing up with their tops accessible. Won't that be nice? Also of some interest is the uh, mud dauber nests over there. You can tell this car has been sitting for a while. We'll obviously clean that up. In the back is your basic VW motor. And it is, oh, got to unlatch the, undo the latches here. It uh, uses technology that's most closely associated with luggage when you talk about the uh, securing and latching mechanism. But the uh, tried and true Volkswagen. Uh, horizontally opposed motor is back here and obviously this will be the place where we install our new electric motor but the most interesting thing in my mind is up front here under this hood lies a vast chasm of space look at all that I think I can get at least 48 of my batteries up here with uh, no issue whatsoever and they can all stand up and I can get to them that black box in the front with the plywood cover, I uh, was able to download the instruction assembly manual online and discovered that that is a box to hold 100 pounds of sand for ballast. In other words, the, uh, the front end of this was so light that they had to weight it down. And uh, that's good news. Uh, in my eyes, that appears to be a battery box. And I can certainly find 100 pounds of batteries to fit in there. The chrome is in remarkably good condition. The gel coat, the color, is obviously not. Uh, and it looks a little bit pink here. Uh, I'm thinking that what I might do is paint this a pretty ivory. And I think that'll allow me to keep the uh, nice reddish interior and show it off very nicely. So that's a quick overview of the before on the car. I'm going to be stripping it down this weekend and plan to take it off to Bob, my body guy, on Monday. And he will uh, paint it. I think we'll, we'll, we'll chat about that ivory. And in addition to the paint, he has one other very important job to do. And that is to repair the uh, yawning chasm that used to be the passenger's floor. 
uh, that will be a, a, new, a new pan welded in there as well. So it'll be solid structurally and um, also planning to uh, convert it to disc brakes on the front given that we'll have a fair amount of weight to stop and coil over shocks and uh, I've ordered a uh, Kostov 9 for it. I'll be using the batteries, charger, DC-DC converter and all the other electrical bits and pieces out of the uh, yellow e-bug eye and uh, it's, it's away at the shop right now getting brand new rear springs. I think uh, my last conversation with the uh, MG specialist was that we've, we've sorted out the handling issues and it's, uh, it's a great car, but unfortunately one my wife couldn't get in and out of. Not that, uh, not that she's too big, but uh, it just requires some folding that she wasn't comfortable with. She gets in and out of this one just fine, and I think that I'll actually be able to get her to ride with me, which I think will be a very important uh, uh, asset in getting her, uh, although she's been wonderful about these projects of mine and encourages it, uh, she, we haven't been able to do the, the kind of fun things we'd like to do in terms of uh, taking moonlight rides and such. And maybe we'll get her on the road and do that soon. So anyway, I wanted to show you a bit of a, a preview of or what we have in store. And I'll keep you posted along the way as we uh, progress.